How we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network as we welcome you back to Around the NCAA as we wrap up Conference Championship Week. And we take a look at the scores you can see in Conference USA. Middle Tennessee beats Southern Miss 38-24. Uh, big victory for the Blue Raiders there. Navy 28-20 over Connecticut in the American. Big upset, Tennessee Beats LSU 34-21 to win the SEC. So Tennessee back to winning ways. SEC championship for the Volunteers. And they're going to be in a BCS bowl game because of it. Beating a team that had Leonard Fournette, Darius Geis. Ton of great players, especially runners on that LSU offense. But they're not able to get it done in the SEC championship game. And they lose out there. UCLA beats Washington, so a four-loss Pac-12 champion as they win 31-21. Josh Rosen coming back from injury here in the back half of the season, giving UCLA some big, big victories as they come away with the win there. Uh, Washington tried to come from behind, but UCLA was just able to hold them off. It was very even through the first half, but UCLA pulled away in the second half. Unbeaten Ohio State stays just that unbeaten as they beat Wisconsin 24-14. JT Barrett with a couple of touchdowns in the first quarter and then another touchdown in the fourth quarter as Ohio State took a big lead. Wisconsin tried to battle back, but they were never able to really get closer than 10 points. And Ohio State will be going to the national championship game, as will defending champion Clemson. 41-31 over Miami. Deshaun Watson and Brad Kaya put on a show, but it was Watson that ended up out dueling the Miami quarterback and because of that Clemson will be looking to repeat for a national title and with that performance really solidifying things Deshaun Watson is your Heisman winner last out uh, last year's Heisman winner JT Barrett uh, Lamar Jackson comes in third Deshaun Kaiser and Luke Falk coming in fourth and fifth respectively but it was Watson's to lose Honestly, I don't think Barrett was anywhere near him statistically. And so Deshaun Watson is your Heisman winner this year. So it'll be a battle in the national championship game of the last two Heisman winners at quarterback, Deshaun Watson and JT Barrett. And you can see Watson had a great game versus Miami, 326 yards through the air for four touchdowns. His passing stats went up very much this year. His rating was great. His yardage went up, averaged nearly 300, almost 300 yards a game, 38 touchdowns to only seven interceptions this season. His rushing went down a couple yards, but still averaged 43 yards a game and ran for six scores as well. So fantastic performance from uh, Deshaun Watson. If we take a look at JT Barrett's stats, conversely, you can see how he amazingly finished second. I think it was only on name recognition because he didn't have a great season. I mean, he passed for 226 yards a game, but he went from 40 touchdowns last year to 27 this year and from four interceptions to 12 this year. So honestly, not fantastic statistics if you're looking passing-wise. Rushing, of course, he regressed there as well. Only 69 yards a game, nine touchdowns still. So rushing-wise, he did a little bit better than Watson, but his passing was nowhere near it. You can see Watson very, very deserving of the Heisman. Lamar Jackson, you take a quick look at his stats as well. 23 touchdowns, 10 picks, 13 rushing touchdowns was big for him. But following that, we take a look. Your Pitt Panthers will be in the Music City Bowl taking on Texas A&M, number 20 in the country. So that's where we get sorted in. Bull bid wise will be on New Year's Eve in Nashville, Tennessee. So hopefully we'll get a ton of Pitt Panthers fans out to that. And following our bowl being given to us, we are able to take a look at the award winners. Maxwell Ward actually went to Luke Falk, Washington State quarterback. You can see he had 53 total touchdowns on the season in a huge spread attack uh, that Mike Leach runs. So great performance for him. Sean Watson was second in that voting. Lamar Jackson third. You can see JT Barrett all the way down in sixth as far as the Maxwell was concerned. Deshaun Watson, though, in addition to taking home the Heisman, does take home the Walter Camp. And again, JT Barrett not close. So the fact that he was that high in the Heisman voting was probably just due to, you know, Heisman bias and that he won the year before. You can see Falk, Jackson, Miles Gaskin, the running back from Washington, fairly high up there as well. Uh, Bednarik, defensively, defensive player here. DeMar Hamlin from the Pitt Panthers comes away with it. 56 tackles, 9 tackles for a loss, a sack, 2 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, 4 pass deflections. So very solid season. But I will say you have to take these uh, awards, these user awards, or the, I should say any awards that come to our defense, really with a grand salt. The defensive statistics and awards seem to be heavily skewed toward user teams because our pass defense 
was not good. And look at Jordan Whitehead was second in this award, and he didn't even win it last year. He won the Thorpe last year. Um, but he has only 55 tackles. He actually sat out the first three games of the season. Seven tackles for a loss, two sacks. He did have a couple more interceptions, another pass deflection, but really subpar stats con considering how he was last year. Uh, and Sean Dion Hamilton of Alabama comes in third. Nagurski Award, defensive lineman. Dwayne Hendricks comes away with, and I think it's actually front seven, best front seven. Uh, Dwayne Hendricks from the Pitt Panthers comes away with the award. You can see stepped into a starting role this year, and 13 sacks is nothing to shake a stick at. Had a defensive touchdown as well on a fumble recovery. Had two forced fumbles, two recovered fumbles. So really solid season from Dwayne Hendricks. Uh, O'Brien Award offensively, Luke Falk again as the best quarterback in the country. He wins it over the Heisman Award to Sean Watson. Doak Walker Award winner, best running back in the country, Saquon Barkley. 971 yards rushing, but 18 touchdowns, as well as dual threat. 46 catches, 646 yards, 6 touchdowns receiving as well. on Johnson, very different, was fantastic running the ball. Almost 1,800 yards, 14 touchdowns, but didn't show that dual threat ability uh, compared to Saquon. Miles Gaskin, you can argue he was close to as, you know, you know, Worthy as the award as Saquon Barkley on yardage and you know usage, but didn't have nearly the touchdowns that Saquon did. Wayne Gallman, another guy with a really big season who could have been deserving of this award. Blitnikoff Award, Robert Lewis, Washington State, 93 receptions, 17 touchdowns. He was Luke Falk's favorite target, so that's going to do it for him, no doubt about that. You can see a couple of the other guys that were in on the award as well. Juju Smith-Schuster actually still in school as a senior, had a very solid season, ended up fourth in the voting and we'll see what he can do in the pros. Hopefully, he'll go to the Steelers. Uh, Outland Award winner goes to Mitch Hyatt of Clemson, the junior there, uh, with a very solid season as the best lineman. Best interior lineman, uh, the Remington Award, or center or whatever it might be, goes to Mustafer of Notre Dame. So, good solid year for the junior there. Dwayne Hendricks, of course, wins the Lombardi Award as best defensive lineman. Uh, Austin Bryant, runner-up, six sacks from Clemson, as well as Chad Thomas, from Miami, so a big ACC contingent in the top three of the voting there. Best linebacker award goes to Dwayne Thomas, Texas A&M. He'll actually be facing your Pitt Panthers here in the bowl game, so we'll see what kind of ability uh, Mr. Thomas has. Ocasio and Hamilton of Alabama there, second and third. Thorpe Award best defensive back goes to DeMar Hamlin with Jordan Whitehead and John Reed of Penn State uh, actually as your uh, runners up in that particular situation. Hamlin's been very solid, there's no doubt about that. You can see Reed's statistics here in the two years of this dynasty so far. Groza Award, Chris Davis, the freshman kicker of Alabama, is able to come away with that award. Interestingly enough, Jay Bump, your Pitt Panthers, finishes ninth. So, very solid season for the freshman kicker of the Panthers. 18 and 20 field goal, long of 46, and was perfect on extra points. So, what more could you ask of him, to be honest? Uh, Ryan Winslow, 10th in the voting uh, for Punter of the Year, the Ray Guy Award. Daniel of Tennessee comes away with that award, but a good solid year for our senior kicker. And Quadri Henderson repeats as Returner of the Year, three return touchdowns. It was closer this year, to be honest. Wicks had a very solid year. Quadri wasn't as dynamic, uh, but he does just enough to win the Returner of the Year award. NCAA first team you can take a look and stop it whenever you want to uh, to take a look at your favorite players we're not going to see the stats but you can at least see who's come away with the first team Saquon Barkley Chris Warren of Tennessee are the running backs you can see some big name linemen there Robinson of Alabama Dwayne Hendricks DeMar Hamlin Paris Ford a freshman first team all NCAA again take these with a grain of salt uh, for any of the user defensive players because I, th I think you know, it tends to skew in that way defensively at the very least. Deshaun Watson, second team all NCAA, even though he wins the Heisman. Uh, so that's an interesting one to see there. But a ton of Clemson and Ohio State. That's one thing you can definitely pick out of these all NCAA teams. A lot of Ohio State freshmen here on the all NCAA first team. So that could be a big reason why they are undefeated and in the hunt for the national title here in the national championship game. Paris Ford, all NCAA. So good to see from him. 
Very solid performance and season from our true freshman free safety. And then we'll go take a look at the All-ACC first team. And again, you're going to see a lot of Clemson, a lot of Miami. Those were the two teams that met in the ACC championship game. Uh, Dwayne Hendricks, first teamer for us. Uh, Celine Brightwell, first teamer for us. Hamlin, Ford, Whitehead, and Winslow, first team punter. Henderson, first team receiver. So some Pitt Panthers in there as well. Good to see. Second team, Brad Kaya, the quarterback. Not a lot offensively as our offense took a huge hit this year. We lost, of course, you know, Nathan Peterman, James Conner, a ton of big targets. Uh, and so for that reason, our offense took a hit. But our defense has been improving through the, the course of the season. Our offense, not so much. So we'll see how that shapes up as we head into next season. ACC overall standings. Miami actually won the Coastal. They're showing below Virginia Tech just because they have a second loss from losing to Miami uh, in the championship game of the conference. We finished third in the Coastal. Not our best showing, but... You know, we'll go bowling nonetheless and hope to at least finish out the season on a high note considering we've lost now two games in a row. And you can see the Atlantic Clemson waltzed away with it. Louisville and Florida State the closest. Syracuse with a solid season as well uh, to be able to get themselves bowl eligible this year. Coaches poll, top 25. The only ones that really matter, Clemson 1, Ohio State 2. Arkansas State unfortunately misses out, uh, but they will get a chance to try and bust the BCS and you know state their claim for a national title as they're unbeaten, and they did get a BCS matchup. So maybe they can get a share of the national title pool of UCF in this particular uh, you know, strategy. BCS-wise, Clemson, Ohio State 1 and 2 in the BCS rankings. No doubt about that. <clears throat> but Arkansas State will get in as an at-large and try and do what they can to bust things up as you look at the top 10 of the BCS right there. Bowl results and bowl schedule. Again, not going to focus on every game here, but if you see your favorite team, you can pause it and take a look at how their record is, who they're facing here in the bowl matchups. We will look at some specific bowl matchups, though, some big BCS games as well as your Pitt Panthers here, is who they'll be in the Music City Bowl taking on Texas A&M at noon on New Year's Eve. So that'll be a big, big matchup. Some other big matchup you can see, though, USC, Florida State, and the Sun Bowl. That'll be two high prestige programs there. Uh, LSU, Purdue, and the Capital One Bowl. Outback Bowl, Bama, and Wisconsin. Some big games there. Rose Bowl, BCS matchup. Notre Dame, UCLA, Fiesta Bowl, TCU versus Penn State. Sugar Bowl, Tennessee as the SEC champion will take on Miami. Orange Bowl, Arkansas State versus Texas. So Cam Texas uphold the integrity of the Power Five conferences. Uh, Cotton Bowl, Florida, Kansas State will be a big game. And, of course, your BCS National Championship will have Ohio State versus Clemson, the two remaining Power Five unbeatens. Notre Dame, UCLA in the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Notre Dame is favored. They, you know, Across the board, they look better than UCLA overall. But with Josh Rosen back, you never know what can happen. TCU, Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl. Penn State, Saquon Barkley looking to really shine here before he goes off to the, uh, more than likely to the draft. Uh, trying to have a big performance in that matchup. Sugar Bowl, Tennessee versus Miami. Herb Street's actually picking Tennessee because they're on a hot streak. Miami. Lost to Clemson, of course, in the ACC championship game. Should be a fairly even matchup. Some very talented players in that game. Arkansas State, this is the big one. Herb Street likes them, you know, thinks they're going to be motivated, picking Arkansas State to come away with the victory over the Longhorns of Texas. They're going to be motivated to try and shut down uh, that Arkansas State attack, though, no doubt about it. And, of course, your national championship game, Herb Street showing a bit of bias as he takes the Buckeyes over the defending national champion, Clemson Tigers. I think Clemson walks away with this one, but we'll have to see how things play out in your national title game. Let us know who you think is going to win. And of course, for your Pitt Panthers, they're taking on Texas A&M, the Aggies. Herb Street's picking Texas A&M. Talent-wise, you'd probably have to lean that way, especially the way that they've been playing throughout the season. It's going to be the Texas A&M pass attack against the Pitt pass defense. Again, that seems to be the matchup that is in question every single week, and that's going to be what Texas A&M is going to try to exploit. Turnover differential will definitely be a big thing, though, uh, in Texas A&M. Not a great rush defense, so the Panthers maybe can run the ball down their throats, keep their defense off of the field, and try and take advantage of you know, A&M's insecurities on that side of the football. If we look at Texas A&M's schedule, how the year's shaking out for them, started off strong. 
three easy wins to start the season before losing to Arkansas. They also had their kind of statement loss as they went down to Mississippi State in overtime. But then they beat LSU in a blowout 34-3. as LSU's first loss until they took on uh, Tennessee in the SEC championship game. And they did lose to Bama. So they've kind of been hit and miss. They also lost to 4-8 Missouri. So you never know what A&M team you're going to get this year. They beat UCLA, who's in a BCS game. 34-31 overtime. So who knows what Texas A&M team we'll see in the bowl game here. For your Pitt Panthers, of course, they start off so strong, beat Penn State, beat Oklahoma State for losing to number one Clemson, lost to number 10 Virginia Tech, and really the only bad loss they've had all season is they lost to North Carolina 24-31 in Chapel Hill before coming home and losing to Miami 34-27 as well. Texas A&M's leaders, Hubenak, 2,821 yards passing, 22 touchdowns, 12 interceptions will be the guy to watch. For the Panthers, of course, they got Danucci. Really been hit or miss this season leading the attack. Quadri Olison, over 1,000 yards on the season with 10 touchdowns. So he's been very solid. Darren Hall's been great as well. So look for that Panthers two-prone rushing attack to be the most important you know, thing as far as their attack is concerned. They want to try and limit them out that they're going to have to pass and really take it to AM on the ground, use up the clock, and see what they can do. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments who you think is going to win the Panthers Bowl game, who's going to win the national championship game, and we'll see you in the Panthers Bowl game. Hail to Pitt. Take care. Bye-bye.